Do not leave me to the will of my foes, O Lord, for false witnesses rise up against me, and they breathe out violence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, I can welcome, <coughs> excuse me, Welcome to the uh, morning mass here from St. Joseph, being streamed live, and thank you for joining us today. Today we celebrate now Tuesday of Holy Week. We're in the holiest time really of the year. This is a time of salvation for us, for ourselves and for the whole world. In fact, this week really has changed all of history, human history, your history, my history, the whole world. And um, a lot of times we don't understand it or appreciate it. But this is the time we really want to enter into the Paschal mystery, our Lord's passion, his death, and his resurrection. So we prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries. Let's now call to mind our sins. And I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. What I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. In the Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so we pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion we may merit to receive your pardon. For we ask that through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask this here that you come forward now for our first reading. This is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It talks really about uh, how the Lord is going to call his servant Israel to a, a, a way of life that's going to be much different than they're used to. That he's going to be, they're going to be a, a, a way to actually bring blessings to the whole world, not just to Israel, but to the whole world. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me. Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. The responsorial psalm, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. 
I, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord. My trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I, I will, will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified. Amen, amen, I say to you. One of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. And so Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? And Jesus answered, is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. And so Jesus dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought, but since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what you need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Jesus, Judas took the morsel and, it left, and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So I now say to you. Now Simon said to him, Master, where are you going? And Jesus answered him, Where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. Though you will well, you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated, everybody at home. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. 
As you can see, we've moved into the church here for a while, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, Father's long-term uh, intentions are, um, but uh, for now we're going to be using the church just so you can have a have some familiarity from um, our uh, normal time being at the at Kavanaugh room, which is also a good place. It's always it's always a wonderful place there too. Today we still celebrate what some commonly call as Spy Tuesday. It's the day that Judas goes out to betray Jesus, to talk to the, the chief priests and the Pharisees about handing him over. And the price will be paid 30, 30 uh, coins, 30 uh, drachma coins. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, we uh, sometimes wonder, you know, is this for uh, financial gain for him? Or is this another motive? It is speculation, especially these days, about what is the motive? Why would Judas do this? He had known G Jesus for some time now, and he'd seen him, he had heard him, and things like this. It is kind of speculated that because Judas was also a revolutionary, in other words, one who would, uh, we call a zealot, one who uh, would try to get rid of Rome by force, um, he would kind of force Jesus' hand because nothing was happening at this point. Again, this is only speculation. We don't know for sure. But it's, it seems to make some sense. There probably wasn't the money so much. But it was the, uh, the actual betrayal, however. What I mean by this is that Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus, not just in terms of word and you know, talking to the authorities. But more to the point, he didn't talk to Jesus. That's kind of, we, uh, kind of what our life can sometimes be, that that we kind of go to many other sources but the Lord. I was thinking about this uh, this, this morning as I was preparing for the homily. This was uh, from a couple, of, a few weeks uh, on the fifth Monday of the fifth week of the year. It talks about the story from uh, the book of Daniel about a beautiful woman called Susanna. And uh, in Babylon, this is one time there was a, 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 people were exiled and there's a lot of captivities in various areas. A beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, her parents had raised her and trained her daughter according to the law of Moses. And what had happened is that uh, so she, he, she was married to a very prominent and wealthy man. And so people, uh, certain people of the, of the town would come to visit him for counsel and things like that. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges of whom the Lord said, wickedness has come down out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. Even they would be corrupt. These men to whom all brought their cases frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. Here's the point. They suppressed their consciences. They would, now allow, they would not allow their eyes to look to heaven. And they did not keep in mind God's just judgments. Why bring this up here? <clears throat> Why bring this here is that Why I say this here is because this is what happens with Judas. He has not turned to the Lord. He's not even talking to Peter or the others about his conflict, his struggle, in terms of what he may personally think politically militarily, whatever it might be. And, uh, but especially he does not go to Jesus to ask him straightforward questions. And the point is, is that sometimes our life is the same way. We don't bother to go to Jesus when we're struggling with certain things. We think we can sort of handle it on our own and make our own resolve about that. But the fact of the matter is, we really can't. It's good to be able to talk out with things, especially you know, our family, you know, especially maybe spouses to talk out with each other about things. And even there, some things are kind of hidden from each other. Where though, although the, that's supposed to be a rather an open field, you might say, it's not honest, but they're honest with each other. But especially with going to God. And so today I wanted to do something a little different. Because even uh, Peter, uh, as we see here, that uh, uh, Peter had made great promises to Jesus. And uh, in a sense, he would betray him, but he also would die for the sake of him. 
Peter asks, Lord, why can I not follow you? That's a good question. Why can I not follow you? The fact of the matter is, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit really present as well. In other words, once he receives the Holy Spirit, he would be willing to die for Jesus. But right now, he made a human effort, which is good, but it would take the Holy Spirit to make the really divine effort. If I cannot follow you now, I will down, lay down my life for you. Of course, Jesus questions him. You will lay down your life for me? I tell you truly, the cock will not crow before you have three times disowned me. And it's, it's for all of us. The same betrayal of Judas, in a sense, we're going to see that happening uh, on that Good Friday, on that uh, Holy Thursday, where, where Peter is going to deny Jesus three times. And, uh, and so it, the thing is, we too do the same thing. We, we deny the Christ more than we realize every day whenever we do sin. I was thinking about this here in terms of the Catholic Catechism. That uh, I know that you all have these in your homes, perhaps under your pillows, a little bit of a osmosis, as you might say. And, uh, but I wanted to read here a little bit about what we call contrition. This is from uh, paragraph 1431. So the Catholic Catechism is divided into paragraphs so we can make quick references and throughout things like that. Contrition. Interior repentance is a radical or re excuse me, reorientation of a, of a whole life, a return, a conversion to God with all our heart, an end of sin, a turning away from evil with repugnance, meaning just detesting, with repugnance toward the evil actions we have committed. At the same time, it entails the desire and resolve to change one's life with hope in God's mercy and trust in the help of his grace. This conversion of heart is accompanied by a salutary pain and sadness, which the fathers called it anami curitatis, meaning the affliction of spirit, compunctio cordis, repentance of heart. In other words, there's a sadness. And this is one of the things we should be understanding when, like when we go to confession, there should be a, a certain sadness about our sins. It may not mull us over necessarily, but there should be a sadness of how we hurt the Lord, how we hurt one another, how we even hurt our own selves. God made us in his image and likeness. He made us for good things. And so um, I thought today, before we do our spiritual communion a little bit later on, I wanted to just talk a bit of what, what do we mean by the church talks about what we call a, a perfect act of contrition perfect act of contrition. And so I have here, I'm going to put this here, I'm not sure if it's blocking this here, but uh, I'll move this out here in a little bit. But um, it's called the perfect act, or an act of contrition. And, um, and it goes like this. Oh my God, I'm heartily, I mean this, this comes from the heart. It's not just a, an intellectual uh, assent to these things, although it also helps. But it really comes from the heart. Apologize, uh, it might be getting a little bit. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended you. And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. That's what we call the imperfect portion. In other words, we dread the loss of heaven. We detest our sins because of that and the pains of hell. I mean, basically the punishment. That's also a good thing. We need that. We need that element. That's where we start. You know, we, we start by being afraid of being punished for things. And that's, uh, we need to have that element. It's a grace of God. Here comes the first perfect part, however, that we really want to go into. But most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love, meaning that God is worthy of everything. And how we do offend him by our words, our actions, our thoughts, the things we fail to do, our attitudes, you know, a, a small judgmentalisms, things that just flash by. We, sin, we offend God by doing that. And so it's important that he bring these up before our attention. That's what we call an examination of conscience. Let me go on a little bit further. 
I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. And so what we'll do here, just before communion, we'll make a good act of contrition. So we can make a, a proper, also, spiritual Holy Communion. Because we have a, even though we, can, we may not have the luxury of going to confession, and the church has been teaching us, especially recently here, that we cannot go to confession immediately because of sin. We can make a perfect act of contrition, which we have up here. To do it with our heart, that's the key. To do it with your heart, and as, best, as best we can. With the intention that when this is all over, the coronavirus is done, and we can, as it were, and we can get back to a, a new normalcy, you might say, we can go to confession again. And, uh, but until then, God hears our prayers. And those sacraments are usually the normal ways of receiving his grace. But he's not limited to the sacraments. He can do all things in him. So uh, I just want to, so we'll do this before uh, communion time. But again, I want to thank you so much. But I guess you can just remind us that it's important that this week that we carve out some time to read the um, passion narratives with the idea of God convicting our heart not only of our sin but more importantly of his love for us that everything he does is out of love it's, it's not out of again political or military types of things it is because he wants to win our hearts to win our love it's like when, when people were kind of courting each other they kind of win each other's heart by their courting each other God wants to court us you might say it's a difficult time here for that. So, the, so today I just ask you to uh, always pray for the grace of sorrow, uh, for sin, but also in thanksgiving for God, for his mercy, to be receptive to his mercy. Sometimes we feel uh, so uh, tainted, as it were, by sin, that we, we feel embarrassed and that we can't even receive his mercy. No, we can't. He wants us to ask for it. So again, God bless you and keep you, and we'll continue on that year. So in trusting then in God's mercy, we bring our needs to the Lord and our Savior. For all the members of the church, may Christ strengthen us as we share the good news of, of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders and those who carry responsibility for the welfare of others, may Jesus guide them in the ways of servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling and suffering, especially the coronavirus, may God's love and presence with them bring consolation and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered at home now, may God open their hearts more fully and increase our faith in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may they rest in the loving presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Once again, let's pray for a, a mediation uh, of, this, of the uh, mitigation, I should say, of the coronavirus for those who are, who are doing research, for those who are uh, medical personnel, pro professional, doctors and nurses, those who are in many ways in harm's way, who are also exhausted in terms of this, uh, probably not 24-7, but it's pretty close to that for many of them, do an extra hour. And for those who are suffering, those who have died because of coronavirus, and for our, those who are kind of cooped up at home and other things like this, that we be obedient to what the, the, the governors and are trying to do in terms of trying to tone down this. And, uh, but also the church is asking us to do the same thing, to be obedient even to our civil leaders in this matter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and tenderness, we know that you carry us in our midst of our struggles. Hear our prayers today and give us all that we need to do your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, with your goodness. We have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Lord, by the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, and God of all creation, that through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. And blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours now may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. And so we pray. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray on these offerings of your family and those you made make partakers of these sacred gifts. Grant us a share in their fullness now. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are quickly approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. So may our voices, we pray, join with theirs. In one chorus of exultant praise, we acclaim and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, in the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Samuel, our Bishop, or his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you be merited to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with them, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. O Lord, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Momentarily, we'll do have the spiritual act of communion. But as I mentioned earlier, let's pray uh, this time uh, uh, an act of contrition. Uh, again, uh, the idea, if, we, if we're doing it from the heart, it is a perfect act of contrition. That's kind of the key about this. So not worry, if I, am, I, am I doing it well? Am I doing it perfectly? No. Let's do it from the heart. The Lord knows what we're thinking, what we're, what we're hoping for. And uh, again, when we, when we have the opportunity to go, go to uh, the sacrament of confession, He'll be there. He'll be there for us. But in the meantime, oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you. And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to confess my sins to do penance, and to unmend my life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's go ahead and make our spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Lord, you again, thank you so much for this time of communion with you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of our conscience. Lord, our conscience is supposed to guide us, but it's also meant to be an informed conscience. One that we study, one that we pray and ask, Lord, that you would guide us. Lord, the, the ways of the world are very powerful. A lot of times they kind of sway our conscience. Lord, help us to always be humbled before you. But the act of contrition, Lord, is a powerful prayer, too. And we should do really, at the end of the day, perhaps perhaps we go before we go to bed, but make an attrition. Make, first of all, an examination of conscience. How did we do it today? Where did we kind of fall short? Were we curt with anyone? We failed to do something we really should have done. Things we even, like Judas or St. Peter, promised you that we would never betray you. And yet, even today, we've done so. Lord, that act of contrition is important. Help us, O oh Lord, to seek you then with our own mind and heart, to make that little act of contrition every night before we go to bed. So should we pass away even through the night, we will be in your grace. Lord, we do offer the kindness to Holy, Holy Communion again for those who are particularly affected by the coronavirus. We pray for the hospital workers and doctors and the research. We pray for those who are trying to do so much with so little, especially even in terms of the, of the um, uh, protective gear and things like that. Lord, we also pray for families that are making special adjustments. We pray for marriages, especially, Lord, some things that they used to kind of keep us a, at a certain distance. We may not have that. So, Lord, we tend to be a little bit in the family. So we ask you to bring some peace, your healing, your restoration, your concord, especially in marriages these days. And Lord, we do offer up this, this kind of inconvenience. We offer it for those who are suffering, for those who don't have the luxury of getting out. We offer up our own inconveniences for those who might be struggling in heart and spiritually, those who are rather scared or nervous about all this whole thing. May your peace instead, however, come. Because, Jesus, we do trust in you. Jesus, we truly, truly trust in you. To you be honor and praise forever. And so we pray. And nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, O Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, 
you would make us partakers of life eternal. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever and ever. Amen. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snare to the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust in hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. You all have a wonderful day, everybody. God keep you safe and sound.